Welcome to this video on how to knit a pair of overalls, or dungarees as they're also known. These overalls will fit any of my painted Cricut animals. For this pattern you'll need yarn that's the same weight as the yarn you used for your animal, straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than those that you use to knit your animal. In most cases I find that I can use the size of needles that are recommended for the weight of yarn I'm using. I use smaller needles when knitting the animals because the animal will eventually be stuffed, so I want the stitches to be tight enough that no stuffing shows through. But when I knit clothes for my animals, I want them to be stretchy and looser so that they fit well. You'll also need two small buttons for the straps, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're working on. For this pattern, you'll need to know how to do stockinette and garter stitch, basic increases and decreases, and mattress stitch for the seams. At the hip area, you'll use short rows to add a little bit of room for the hips. If you haven't done that before, don't worry. It's really quite easy, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example of the finished project. We're going to start at the bottom at the leg hems and work up to the bib at the top. The first thing we need to do is knit the inside of the pocket. We'll insert this piece on row 35 after we've knitted the outer pocket with the rest of the overalls. So start by casting on seven stitches and leave a little bit of a tail that you can use to sew this piece to the inside of the overalls later. Knit across on row 1, and then continue in stockinette to row 10. After row 10, cut the yarn, leaving a small tail for sewing with later, and then transfer these stitches to a stitch holder. Because there are only 7 stitches, I like to just put them on a tapestry needle because I always have one of those close by. With the inner pocket piece prepared and set aside, we can begin working on the overall legs. Cast on 22 stitches, leaving a tail for sewing the leg seam later. I normally like to knit both legs at the same time. However, the specific yarn that I'm working with today has an ombre effect that fades gradually, so yarn at the end of the skein is a different shade. So I'm going to knit both legs separately in this video, but feel free to knit both legs if your yarn lets you work that way. On rows 1 through 3, knit across. Using garter stitch here creates a nice hem. On row 4, purl across. This is going to be the wrong side. On row 5, 
we'll increase one stitch at each end. So knit two stitches and then increase one. I like to increase by knitting into the row below the stitch on the needle, but you can do any kind of increase you like. Continue knitting across until you get to the last two stitches. At that point, increase again and then knit the last two stitches. Pull across on row 6. On row 7, repeat what we did on row 5. Knit 2 and then increase 1. Then knit across to the last two stitches and increase again. Then knit the last two stitches. Pull across on row 8, and knit across on row 9. If you didn't knit both legs at once, then at this point, you'll need to cut the yarn and cast stitches onto the empty needle for the second leg. Repeat rows 1 through 9, remembering to increase on rows 5 and 7. After you've finished knitting the last row of the second leg, don't cut the yarn. You'll use it to work across both legs on row 10. So now we begin working across both legs. On row 10, purl 25 stitches. At this point, you should have one stitch left on the piece you're currently working on. Purl this last stitch together with the first stitch on the next leg. Then, purl the remaining 25 stitches. You should have 51 stitches on your needle at this point. Knit across these stitches on row 11.
on rows 12 and 13, we're going to do a section of short rows. This creates a little bit of extra room for the bum so that the pants don't need to stretch as much when the animal is sitting. If these short rows are confusing or frustrating to you, you could simply purl across on row 12 and knit across on row 13. So here's how you do the short rows on row 12. Purl 12 stitches and then turn your work. Put the yarn over the right hand needle and then knit into the next stitch and all of the remaining stitches. Turn your work again and this time purl 10. And then turn, yarn over again, and knit 10 back to the end again. and turn again. Now we're going to work across all the stitches we just did. So purl 10, then purl two together through the back loops. and purl one, and then purl two together through the back loops again, and at this point you're just going to purl to the end of the row. Row 13 is similar to row 12, but now we're starting with the knit row. So knit 12 and then turn. Yarn over the right hand needle and then purl into the next stitch and into the next 11 stitches. and then turn. Now knit 10, and turn, and again, yarn over the right hand needle, and then purl to the end again. and turn. Now we're going to knit across all the stitches that we just worked. So knit 10, do a right leaning decrease. For most people this is just a simple knit two together. Then knit one, Do another right leaning decrease. And now knit all the way to the end of the row.
On rows 14 through 23, you're just going to do simple stockinette stitch, purling on the wrong sides and knitting on the right sides. So I'm going to stop here and then I'll catch back up with you on row 24. On row 24, we begin outlining the pocket. So purl the first 22 stitches. Then knit 7 stitches to form the bottom of the pocket. Then purl the final 22 stitches. On row 25, knit the first 22 stitches. Then slip one stitch, knit in the front and back of the next stitch, and then knit the next three stitches. Then knit into the front and back of the next stitch, slip the next stitch, and then knit the final 22 stitches. The slip stitches here begin forming the side outlines of the pocket. Purl across on row 26, being careful to untwist any stitches that might have gotten twisted on the previous row. On row 27, knit 22, slip 1, knit 7, slip 1 again, and then knit the final 22 stitches. Now we begin decreasing for the waistband. On row 28, purl 1, then purl 2 together 7 times. Purl the next 23 stitches. and then purl two together seven times again.
and purl the last stitch. At this point you should have 39 stitches on your needle. On row 29, knit 15 stitches, slip 1, knit 7, slip 1 again, and then knit the final 15. On row 30, we begin forming the waistband by knitting the first 12 stitches, purling the next 15, and then knitting the last 12 stitches again. On row 31, bind off the first 12 stitches and knit. Then, knit the next two stitches without binding any off. Slip the next stitch. Knit the next seven. Slip the next stitch. And knit three. Finally, bind off the remaining stitches and knit, leaving a longer tail for sewing the back seam. When you're done with row 31, you should have 15 stitches on your needle, and we'll use these 15 stitches to knit the bib. Now we can begin working on the front bib. With the wrong side facing, rejoin the yarn to work the next purl row. And that's row 32. On row 32, knit the first two, purl the next 11, and then knit the last two stitches. On row 33, knit 3, slip 1, knit 7, slip 1, and then knit the last 3. Row 34 is where we form the top of the outer pocket. To do this, knit the first two stitches and then purl one. Row 
Now bind off the next eight stitches knitwise. And then bind off one more stitch, but this time purl wise. Now knit the final two stitches. At this point, you should have a total of six stitches on the needle three on one side of the gap, and three on the other side. At this point, we need to insert the inner pocket piece that we set aside earlier. So to do that, you'll knit the first three stitches of row 35, and then transfer the seven stitches at the top of the inner pocket piece you knitted earlier, transfer those stitches onto the left hand needle. Knit across those stitches, being careful that the stitches aren't twisted, and then continue knitting across the final three stitches. At this point, you should have 13 stitches on your needle. We're near the end now. We just need to finish off the top of the bib and then add the straps. So on row 36, knit 2, purl 9, and knit 2. On row 37, knit 2, do a left leaning decrease, and for most knitters this is also known as an SSK, and it's done by slipping two stitches, twisting them so that they sit in the opposite direction, and then knitting into the back of both stitches. Since I knit in combination style, my stitches are already facing that direction, so I simply need to knit into the backs of those two stitches. Knit the next five stitches, and then do a right leaning decrease. For most knitters, this is known as a K2 together and is done by simply knitting into both stitches normally. For my style of knitting, I need to untwist these stitches first and then knit into the final two stitches. And now you should have 11 stitches. On row 38, knit two, purl seven, and then knit two. Row 39 is similar to row 37. Knit the first two, do a left leaning decrease, knit three, do a right leaning decrease, and then knit the final two. And now you should have nine stitches. On row 40, knit 2, purl 5, and then knit the final 2. On row 41, we make the buttonholes. To do this, knit the first two stitches, yarn over, do a left leaning decrease, knit 1, do a right leaning decrease, yarn over again, and then knit the final two. Simply knit across on row 42, And finally, bind off all the stitches knitwise on row 43.
At this point, we need to knit the straps, so set this piece aside for now. The straps are two simple rows in knit. So for the first strap, cast on 23 stitches. Knit across on row one. and then bind off knitwise on row two. Repeat these steps again for the second strap. And now you've got all the pieces and you just need to put it all together. Start by sewing the leg seams. Fold each leg in half lengthwise and then use the cast on end to sew the inside seam up to the crotch. Do this for both legs. Then try to close up any holes where the legs meet. And sew just a few stitches up the back seam. I made a mistake here by weaving in and trimming some of my ends, but don't do that quite yet because it's nice to have those ends after all the seams have been sewn so that you have something you can use to close up any holes that you find when you think everything's done. Before we sew the back seam, let's sew the inner pocket while it's easier to get to. The slip stitches on the sides and the row of knit stitches on the bottom help you see where to sew the inner pocket down. Using the tails that you left on the inner pocket, just follow that outline and sew around the sides and bottom of the pocket. Be careful to keep your stitches small so that they don't show through on the front side. Next, take the tail that you left at the waistband and use it to sew the back seam from the waistband down. You want to leave an opening in the back seam large enough for your animal's tail. Animals with large tails like this raccoon need a much larger hole than animals like the cheetah that has a thin tail that only needs a small opening. I find that it helps to sew the back seam while the overalls are on the animal it's being sewn for. That way you can see more easily how far down the back seam needs to be sewn from the waistband. You can also see if more of the bottom part of the seam needs to be sewn up.
Now let's work with the straps. First you need to decide which side of the straps you want to be facing out. One side, the side I've chosen to use, has two distinct edges. The other side has a corded pattern which I also like. Once you've decided on which is the right side, sew a button onto the end. You'll need the yarn tails to attach the straps to the waistband. After the buttons are sewn on, attach the buttons to the bib through the buttonholes. Then stretch the straps over the shoulders and behind the animal, crossing them in the back. Sew so each strap to the waistband, being sure that the straps are an equal distance from the back seam. It might help to pin one of the straps so that it doesn't move. Finally, check that there aren't any holes that need to be closed, and then weave in and trim any remaining ends. And that's it. You may have noticed the sneakers that my cheetah was wearing. Check out my written patterns for that and I'll be adding a video showing how to make them as soon as I can. If you're interested in the raccoon or cheetah pattern, you can also look for those. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new videos. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.